Previously on Skyrim Rex to Riches, Olaf picked some cabbages, bought a dog called Cabbage, chopped some wood, shot a lot of elk in the ass, fell in love with a lady called Gilfrey, got married in the Temple of Mara, killed his dog by accident, done some more hunting, became the Thane of Solitude, and bought Proud Spire Manor with his hard-earned money. So, four months have passed since we last uh, left Olaf. It's been a long time, and he's now a wealthy Solitude resident. He is one of the noblemen of Solitude. He is rich. His house is fully upgraded. He has some fine robes, which once belonged to the Emperor of, uh, of Tamriel. He bought them at a second-hand shop. Gilfrey is living in his house, along with his, uh, his, his house call. The Sword Maiden. It's a pretty sweet life. He's living with two ladies in a big house. But he's not enjoying it. Because Olaf, as you all know, is a simple man. And this life is not for him. Uh, he struggled all his life to be something. But now he feels jaded by the whole being a rich guy thing. He misses the days of stalking the plains of Whiterun, hunting elk shooting elk in the ass. So he ditches his kingly robes and his fine hat, which you remember he found in a pile of guts in an earlier episode. He kept that hat, reminds him of the old days. And he's stripped back down to his sack and he's thrown his shoes away because he started his adventure with no shoes and a sack on his back and now he's, he's come full circle. He's gonna start a new adventure. And this was uh, spurred on by a letter he received from Jarl Sidgir of Falkreath, uh, saying that uh, the fame of his exploits has uh, travelled across Skyrim, presumably his amazing bow and arrow skills, uh, so he's going to head to Falkreath and respond to the letter. So we take the carriage to Falkreath and we go and meet the Jarl. He's offering us the position of Thane, um, but in exchange for doing him a deed, which is clearing a mine of bandits. Now we'll see if the stories about you are true. Pretty typical uh, quest for uh, Skyrim. So off we head. Um, before we go, we speak to Lord and get some supplies, get some boots, get some arrows. Olaf is now independently wealthy, so money is of no concern to him. So we head to the mine, which uh, eagle-eyed viewers will know that we actually visited in a previous episode of Rags to Riches. Uh, the bandits seem to have returned. Um, we got Feindal to come with us just as backup, but Olaf in the last four months has been practicing uh, his archery daily at the uh, at the Legion Stronghold in Solitude, so he has no problem taking these guys out with a few well-placed arrows. Feindal kills one guy, he wasn't even needed. So we kill the bandit leader of Ember Shard Mine, and we are now, we've completed the favour for uh, for the Jarl of Falkreath. Here. You deserve a reward for your service. I hereby grant you permission to purchase property in Falkreath Hold. So one of the perks of being Thane is that you're allowed to buy a house uh, in the town that you're the Thane of. Um, but there's no house available in Falkreath, but the steward says, why don't I sell you some land? So Olaf, uh, whereas once he his quest was to buy a fine house, his new quest is to return to his working man salt of the earth roots and build his own house. Follow the road east from Falkreath, then north at the crossroads. Turn left just past Pine Watch. So we have some dinner, some wine, uh, at the inn in Falkreath because we don't have a bed as of yet, and we uh, we haven't we spend the night in the inn, just like old times. Let me know if there's anything else you need. Grizzly winter morning in Falkreath. Uh, not the most picturesque of Skyrim towns, but uh, we head to a parcel of land uh, which is called Lakeview Manor. 
even though there's no mana there yet, but there is a lake view, so we've got half of that. We've got a pile of logs there, chopping block, nice little bit of land, little, little bit of uh, empty space there, a couple of rocks, a couple of weeds, we can sort that out, but here, uh, the Jarl has laid out some basics for us for building a house. We've got the drafting table to work out the schematics, we've got a workbench, and we've got a chest uh, that's full of some nice starting supplies so we don't have to go out and toil quite just yet. We have enough stuff to get started. So we need to build the foundations of the house and the framing and at the basic bones, the shell of the house. So in the chest we've got some clay, corundum, iron and quarried stone. Uh, all this stuff is relatively easy to find in the world but we've got a little head start here. Uh, there's the area where the house will be. It's tiny to start with, but uh, much like Olaf, small things become great things, given, given in a certain amount of time and effort. So we need some lumber. Uh, there's a mill down the road, uh, Hurt here, uh, who may or may not be a vampire. The red glowing eyes seem to be uh, a clue, but you know, if she's not trying to drink Olaf's blood and she's got the lumber, we're fine with it. We can deliver it wherever you need. Olaf doesn't get caught up in the affairs of vampires and monsters and the Dawn Guard. He doesn't, he, he's too busy living his life. So we've got a basic bit of a house here. It's looking, there's no roof as of yet. Which isn't ideal in this rainy climate, but it looks pretty good. So we build the house, the roof framing. And there we have it. One house. Or part of a house. So we build a door, build a garden, build an animal pen. Looking pretty good. And here it is, here's the house. We've got one chest and a workbench which will allow us to build furniture, decorations, make it make a house a home, if you will. The garden can be used to grow stuff, obviously. The animal pen, we can keep animals. Because it's more than a house, we're trying to build a self-sufficient uh, community here, like a little mini village. So we're missing a lot of iron parts, we need fittings and uh, locks and other stuff. Luckily there's a handy iron vein uh, right next to the house. So we mine some ore, some iron ore. But we need to turn the ore into ingots and there's no smelter here. Uh, there's also no smelter in Riverwood which is the nearest town to Lakeview Manor. So we have to run all the way to Whiterun back to our old stomping ground where, uh, where Olaf started his life. So we smelt some ingots which we can then turn into useful uh, fittings to hold the house together and nails are one of the most important uh, ingredients in the hearth fire house building experience. Okay so we're, the house is now enterable, uh, it is complete but it's empty and we need somewhere to sleep for the night so we're going to build a bed. Put some uh, some wall sconces outside to keep away uh, you know, creatures, spriggans. There we have it. Taking shape. Humble, humble abode for a humble man. So we now have the enough stuff to build our own smelter and grindstone and, and essential utilities on our own land so there'll be no more travelling to Whiterun to smelt ore, which is a pain. So we're going to extend the house quite significantly here, um, but we need a lot of bits so we're using some, uh, we're smelting some corundum ore that we bought and building some locks which we need to build, uh, every time you extend the house you need to build doors with locks to create a, you know, an entryway which makes sense because how are you going to get in there otherwise and that's the extension, it's pretty big, you can see the area marked out there pretty significant in, uh, size increase so we need a lot of stone, luckily there's an infinite stone quarry right next to the uh, building materials and it's the smelter so stone is not something we have to worry about and soon we won't have to buy mine or materials at all but you'll find out about that in part 2 so we've got the foundations here for the extension looking pretty good Some. Uh, weeds there poking through but that'll be dealt with soon. Uh, 
And uh, there we have it, the extension is complete. Uh, night is falling, uh, we've been working well into the night, but Olaf is a driven man. So now the house, uh, the former house, is now an entryway to a much larger house. Now it's going to take a lot of money and, uh, and material har harvesting to fill this giant place. It is just an empty shell at the moment, but it's, it's Olaf's empty shell. He built this with his own bare hands. So we do some decorating to fill the house with some, uh, some bits to make it a little bit more homely. Olaf has some dinner, then heads to bed after a long day of graft. Olaf has some breakfast, some a dumpling and some wine. Classic breakfast. The house is really taking shape now. It's really big, but it will get bigger. I mean, this is just the beginning. So Olaf has uh, decided to extend the house with some additional bedrooms. Um, if he's going to be moving people into the house, he's going to be moving in Gilfrey. Uh, maybe some staff for the house to tend it. And maybe some children, because uh, Olaf, like any good hard-working Nord, is a family man. He's never had a family. We have to head back to Whiterun to get some supplies, and on the way, uh, a Dark Brotherhood assassin attacks us. Uh, no idea why. Uh, someone's obviously put a contract out on Olaf. Who knows what's happened in the, la in the last uh, four months, in his absence. And we kill an elk. For old time's sake, but we spare its uh, we spare its ass and shoot it in the head. Once we're finished in White Run, we head uh, to Solitude to pick up Gilfrey because uh, she's been alone in Prats by Manor or just hanging out with uh, with her house Carl. But it's time she saw the new the new house. See what Olaf's been doing all this time. She's a very understanding wife. She doesn't care when uh, Olaf disappears for days on end. Press by a manor is so big that um, we can't even find her. Uh, there's some iron ingots that we're going to take, that's going to be useful. And some apples. Why not? There she is. So we're going to invite Gilfrey back to the house. Um, she somehow knows where it is, so she's going to meet us there later. I'll get everything ready and meet you there. Which is fine. She's independent. She's a strong, independent woman. And s slightly psychic. We have something to eat, then we uh, then we head out. Back to the house. Now, annoyingly, we forgot to buy something from White Run, so we have to head back there to Belathor's general goods. Oh, I hate you, Belathor. But we need stuff from him. Um, we need some glass. We need some goat horns to build. Um, just to decorate the house and make it more of a home as opposed to a big, empty, depressing room. Uh, on the way uh, out of White Run, we run into a little girl who asks us if. Uh, we can spare any money. Mister, could you spare a coin? She's homeless and we ask her why she's begging. It's... It's what Brennan said I should do. He's the only one that's been nice to me since... Since Mama. Since she died. Seems like this girl's in trouble and she needs a home. And luckily, Olaf has just built a home. You really wouldn't mind? 